Hello everyone. We're starting a new series here on North Central Television. Over the next several weeks, we're going to learn about the history of the different towns in the NCTV viewing area. We're sure to find out some very interesting facts about each community we visit. Let's start things off in Westmoreland. Westmoreland sits in the northeast corner of Sumner County. The town of about 2,800 residents got its start more than 200 years ago. Well, Sumner County has a long and rich history and it actually predates the state of Tennessee by 10 years, 1786 for Sumner County, 1796 for the state of Tennessee. Westmoreland's history began uh, about that time and I define historic times as the point of time that Europeans or anyone who came through who actually wrote down what they saw the beginning of historic times. So for this area, this northeastern part of Sumner County, it began with long hunters and the long hunters were following buffalo paths and traces of Indians and uh, the area that they followed that they came down through was the route of old 31E today and new highway 31E following the buffalo traces and the Indian war traces that, that came through those areas. Uh, when Sumner County was formed, a few years after that, the very first road that was created by the Sumner County Court started in Castalian Springs at Bledsoe's Fort, and it went north to Greenfield Fort, which was halfway between Castalian Springs and Bethpage, and then from there through what would be Bethpage today, through Bransford, continued north up Old 31E, and then uh, into what is downtown Westmoreland today, and then up to the state line. And it was following a route that would take it to Blue Spring up in Kentucky. Well, that was one of the original paths that long hunters took during that area. So that was a logical place for a first road to be. Uh, I don't know how much of that road was actually constructed, but I do know that by 1810, the Rock House Tavern, which was down in Rock House Hollow, was built and open, and it had a thriving business that lasted from 1810 to the 1960s when it actually burned down. That's probably the, the oldest segment of Westmoreland would be along that corridor, along Old Highway 31E, that, uh, that still is in existence today. We call it the Old Road in Westmoreland, <laughs> and it's the curvy road down as opposed to Highway 31E, which is the main route. Believe it or not, historians like Westmoreland High School Assistant Principal John Creasy don't know for sure who Westmoreland is named for. Lots of theories as to who Westmoreland was named for. I've heard things like people were traveling west and they got tired of, of uh, traveling west so they decided to sit here because there was more land. I think that's kind of hokey-ish. I don't believe that's much to it. Uh, I do know this, that um, uh, there was a newspaper article I ran across that was written by a young lady in the early 30s. And during that time, she mentioned that her mother had mentioned that Westmoreland was named for a wealthy lumberman who was from North Carolina, and uh, he had come here, and uh, which was one of the reasons for the west for the uh, uh, railroad being located here was the vast lumber that was in the area. So this lumberman came here, and he made his financial impact upon the community by uh, by buying up tracts of land, or uh, at least at least contracting with individuals who owned property to uh, to cut the timber and so forth. I've uh, never been able to find that family in North Carolina. There is the Westmoreland family in North Carolina, uh, General Westmoreland in the Vietnam era. Uh, he, his family was from North Carolina, but I've not been able to make any connection. I do know this, that the railroad company, when they were building in 1886, they named several places along the route for uh, people instrumental in the area. For example, Rogana, which is down between here and Gallatin along the old railroad. Uh, the Rogan family lived there. Adolphus, uh, just north of here in Kentucky, uh, one of the railroad workers, his last name was Adolphus. So there is some connection somehow with the railroad as to uh, uh, the name itself. It was 1888 when the post office changed the name from Coatstown, which is what this area had originally been referred to as, to Westmoreland. So it officially made that change at that time. But it, already in 1886 it was being referred to as, as Westmoreland by folks with the railroad. What is known is the railroad, which used to run through what is today downtown Westmoreland, was extremely popular here for many years. Well, I say all the time that Westmoreland is a great example of a railroad town, but there's no railroad in Westmoreland today. The railroad opened in 1886, closed or shut down in 1976. And if you try to find 
much about it today. There's very little left in Westmoreland related to the railroad. The tracks were all gone. Uh, 1886, it was opened up and it was envisioned as a competing route north to south between Nashville and Cincinnati, Ohio that would compete against the existing Louisville and Nashville line that ran from Nashville to, uh, to Louisville, Kentucky and points further north. Uh, it had a, a great deal of promise. Uh, it was first laid out for construction. Right away was purchased in the 1870s in a, a railroad building boom that went through the United States. And then as booms often go, there was a bus that followed and it uh, went on the back burner, so to speak, and it wasn't revived until a few years later and it opened for business in 1886. But the shortcoming of the railroad was the shortness of the line because it actually ran from Gallatin northward to uh, to Westmoreland, and then to Scottsville, and then a small uh, bit of mileage north of there, and then it ended. It never connected to railroads in Glasgow, Kentucky that would have taken it further north. So its death knell was on its very opening day when it, uh, it, it didn't run the full length of the route. One interesting fact about Westmoreland, it lost its status as a Tennessee city for about 12 years. In 1901, Westmoreland was incorporated as a city. It was chartered by the state legislature as a city then. So it makes it one of the oldest existing cities in Sumner County uh, with that 1901 uh, beginnings of it. Uh, G.W. Uh, Barlow, George Washington Barlow, he was a doctor here. He was the first mayor and the council uh, elected along with that. Uh, the uh, uh, city continued in its incorporation up until 1939. And in 1939, it was a victim of the, the uh, Great Depression. Uh, people were paying taxes, but they felt they weren't getting their money's worth. Uh, no garbage service was being provided. Uh, there were no street lights. There were virtually no services being provided by the city because the city was just simply trying to stay afloat with you know, providing water or whatever they possibly could. So citizens said, we're not getting anything for the taxes we're paying. We're not going to pay taxes anymore. Uh, one of my grandfather's brothers was an attorney, Floyd Creasy, and he was charged with the responsibility of going around collecting the delinquent taxes. He uh, enthusiastically embraced his job for a short period of time, then he came back and he said, I'm getting tired of people throwing things at me and the like, so, uh, you know, he said, it's, it's not going to work. So in 1939, the city ceased to exist. It went under. And a, a, uh, I don't really want to call it a citizen's council, it was just a committee of, of uh, forward-thinking individuals. Uh, tried to do what they could in the meantime to remain, maintain law and order, for example, and, and the like. And then in 1951, a uh, vote was taken again and the citizens voted to reincorporate. So from 1951 to today, 2022, is the present reincorporation of the city. Creasy says looking at Westmoreland today, athletics play a huge role in the town's identity as the hometown Eagles dominate the conversation when high school is in session. With so many small towns, uh, one of the glowing lights of a small town are the sports teams with their, you have the, uh, you might want to call them local heroes and the like, because whether it's Friday night basketball or Friday night football or Tuesday night baseball or, you know, whatever, softball and the like, all these different sports are opportunities for people to engage and participate and for the locals to come out and to celebrate. Whether it's a win or a loss, you still enjoy the opportunity. He may be biased, but Creasy says he thinks his hometown is a wonderful place to live. I think Westmoreland is a very good place to live. You mentioned uh, Westmoreland's size in comparison to other towns within Sumner County. I've often said that we are the slow growth area of Sumner County, and that can be a double-edged sword. Uh, the good about that is that uh, it's a great place to raise your family because of that. Uh, there are lots of folks that have been here their entire lives. Uh, we have a number of teachers in our building that have graduated from here and they've come back. And that's always a, a strong testament to uh, the educational facility. Uh, a lot of uh, former students come, you know, and bring their students back. They move back to the community when their children become school-aged. So they do that because of the schools, because of the churches, because of the organizations, because of the businesses, because of the people that are Westmoreland. Next week, we'll head north of the border to Scottsville, Kentucky, and check in on that city's history. Reporting from Lafayette, Barry Hyatt, NCTV.